And so good morning, everyone. So this morning, a quick reading from Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 19 to verse 34. We talk about trusting God wholly and also trusting God for basic means. Before we get into this really quick lesson, we start out by asking the Lord a quick prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to ask the Lord. And we're going to ask him to shine into our hearts, the loving master, the pure light, your divine knowledge. And open up the eyes of our mind, and that we may understand your teachings in the scripture. Help us to apply what we learn so through having conquered simple desires. That we may pursue the spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. You're Christ, you're God, you're light, and to you we get glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Welcome back. So Matthew. Chapter 6, starting in verse 19. I'm going to share the screen over and get right to it. I'm going to start out first by reading verses 19 through 21. All right. So here we go. Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 19. Lay up treasures in heaven. And it says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So when we attach ourselves to treasures on earth, we're cutting ourselves off from the heavenly treasures. We then become slaves to earthly things rather than being free in Christ. The heart of true discipleship lies in one, disentangling ourselves from the chains of earthly things, and two, attaching ourselves to God, the true treasure, right there in verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In verses 22 and 23, It says, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let's look at a Greek word. So the Greek word for mind. Noose. So noose, right? There's the meaning, right? So the Greek word for mind, noose, it's also known as the spiritual eye of the soul. It illuminates the inner man and governs the will, keeping the mind wholesome and pure and fundamental to the Christian way of life. Verse 24, it says, no one can serve two masters. For, he lo for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. As slaves serving two masters, people attempt to maintain an attachment to both earthly and heavenly things. But this is impossible, since both demand but full allegiance. Jesus calls mammon riches. A master, not because wealth is evil by nature, but because of control it has over people. In verses 25 through 27, and it says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the purge of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So what we see here is that Jesus is giving a warning against extreme anxieties. Verse 
but he's not attacking thoughtful planning. Our physical well-being is directly dependent on God and only indirectly on food, drink, and clothing. Anxiety over earthly things demonstrates a lack of faith in God's care. In verse 28, it says, so why, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into heaven, will, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Significant for the day is its own trouble. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Beautiful. In verse 32, it said, For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. At that time, Gentiles served pagan idols. They remain consumed by dependence on earthly things. Those who follow God can be free from this type of dependence. And as we get ready to close out, in verse 33 and 34, it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Significant for the day is its own trouble. So in verse 33, the kingdom of God, that was the central theme in the teachings of Jesus. He taught his righteousness is the subject of the Sermon on the Mount, calling us all to be free from anxiety about earthly things. Jesus also directed us to look to heaven, secure in the faith that God will provide the needed earthly blessings that we all desperately need. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and never worry about tomorrow. I know it's hard. I know I worry about tomorrow all the time. But verse 34 also stands out to me. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Significant for the day is its own trouble. Each day will bring its own trouble, right? So each day, we're always going to have a new trouble. So don't worry about tomorrow, right? When tomorrow comes, we all deal with it, right? I hope you all enjoyed this really quick reading. It's a really quick lesson. I decided to do a video this morning. I enjoy writing, but sometimes writing does get a lot. So I wanted to do a video. and been kind of busy. Haven't done a whole lot of these, but I, do, I enjoy doing these teaching videos. So we're going to close out with prayer. Hope you've all enjoyed this short reading. Our close out prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh Lord God, you've spoken to us your divine sacred words. You illuminate the souls of sinners to comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear as simply as hearers of spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith, having a blameless life in contact without approaching Christ or Lord, you are alive. And to you we get glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. <clears throat> May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countess upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, we depart in peace in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom. Shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. Go in peace. I love you all so much. Have a very blessed day.
Jared Wesley Campbell, JPC, Spiritual Talk. Never, ever hold back. I love you all so much.